Hi, this is Jeff Alban, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome to Job Search Radio. You know, work has changed over the course of years. It wasn't that long ago that if we spoke about temp work, consulting work, gigs, things like that, you know, that was a small portion of work. Uh, maybe five, six percent of the workforce worked in that way. But now it's different. Um, my guest, Miriam Salpeter, will, will quote 35 percent, I believe, uh, as being working, as being people working in this kind of manner. So I thought we would do a show that supports these individuals, people like you, who are working a uh, contract temp work, uh, who are working on different consulting assignments and gigs, to do things to position yourself to find work. Now, I want to be clear, this is not another LinkedIn show. This is a show where you as an individual will learn different kind of marketing strategies than just simply have a good profile on LinkedIn and make sure your keywords are optimized and all that kind of stuff that people tell you. So I hope you enjoyed today's show, and why don't you just sing along with me? Are you looking for a new job or interested in leveling up? Job Search Radio is your go-to resource for insider tips on job hunting and growing your career. Here's your host, Jeff Altman. So my guest is social media strategist and marketing consultant, speaker and coach, Miriam Salpeter of Kepi Careers. Miriam, welcome to Job Search Radio. Great to have you with me. Thank you so much. It's terrific to be here. Super. Now, Miriam, you're not a beginner at all of this. You've been in your field for a long time, as have I. How have you seen the world of work change during the course of your career? That is a great question. I am seeing that in advising job seekers, we really need to think about how jobs are changing. Like, for example, today people are less likely to stay in positions for ex extended periods of time. And there's another trend, which is that a lot of people are being hired for non-traditional gig kind of work. In other words, they're being hired for project-oriented things on a temporary basis or a project basis. and are not really um, looking at the tr traditional and typical nine to five that we used to see more often. It's funny when you talk about gig related work. You know, used to, it used to be that that was the typical part time job that someone did on the side, uh, and now it seems as though it, it's what the work is. It lasts for a fixed duration. Someone's brought in, and then they're disposed of, right? I, disposed of almost sounds uh, like a, a negative take on it. I think that some people actually really enjoy the opportunity to take on temporary assignments. Um, let's face it, sometimes we get sick of the people we're working with, and it might be nice to... Ah, never happened to me. ...a <laughs> new challenge and do something new. Um, in fact, uh, uh, some research shows that between 20 and around 30 or so percent of the U.S. workforce is independent workers. So that would be freelancers, contractors, and temps. And that is up from 6% in 1989. So... That is a pretty big percentage of people who are doing this work, and, and I'm not, to, not to bore you with too many statistics, but a lot of people actually are finding that this kind of work fits well into their lives. They're able to balance their work and, and home lives a little more effectively and efficiently, and I think that I like to advise people to welcome this, uh, this type of uh, working environment as opposed to be afraid of it. I don't think there's a reason to be afraid of it. I think it just requires a shift in orientation from when I got into, into recruiting many years ago. The notion of someone being a consultant or a temp was looked down upon. You, know, you were a good uh, individual to market if you were a full-time employee who had stayed with a firm for the last five years. Anything less than five years back in the Stone Ages when I started out, those were the job hoppers, the evil people you'd never be able to find work for. Now, you know, a five-year person is a throwback. Firms aren't interested in them. 
That's so true, and it's interesting to see that shift in what is considered the norm. And, and when I, even when I first started actively blogging and um, turning to social media um, five, six years ago or so, it was all about job hopping was bad. And just like you said, if you were in a job for, for less than two years even, that was considered odd. But now you can find articles online where if you've been in a job too long, that's considered a negative. So I guess some people would say, well, you can't win. But on the other hand, it's really all about how you market yourself and what skills you're able to accomplish and, and uh, be able to describe to people when you're looking for something new. I think that makes all the difference. And, and I suspect that there's a different way for people to market themselves uh, who are going into this gig life or uh, this consulting or temp work uh, and making a, a career of it. Uh, and folks, before you start thinking this is going to be another LinkedIn show, I promise you it isn't. It's exactly the subject we're, we're not going to be covering here. So what can someone do promoting themselves uh, in different ways other than the well-written LinkedIn profile? Well, while LinkedIn is an important part of their digital presence or having an online presence, there are a lot of other ways for people to be able to attract attention and to be able to demonstrate their expertise. And one way is called a social resume. And I advise people to consider, even if they're not highly skilled uh, technically online, you can find a, a pretty easy to use platform and create a, a, a online document, an online profile that showcases what you know, what you're good at, gives links to maybe projects that you've done or even your resume. And if you're a good writer, I also recommend that that uh, social resume or uh, website includes a blog because that is a great way to let people know what you're good at and attract them to want to learn more about you. And it's interesting that you talk about um, the online resume. Uh, I know in the recruiting field, there's a bias against finding people's resumes on job boards. And I, I feel like I'm a contributor to this because I, I know I was one of the early people to sell against the idea of, in those days, it used to be uh, you know, people who responded to newspaper ads. Mm -hmm. But back in the Stone Ages, you know, I used to market my services being, I find the best person that's available, not the best person who reads the Sunday Times, and create an entire campaign around that that has been changed into the idea of the passive job applicant, that the person that they may find online is certainly far superior to anyone who might be a job board. Now, I could poke lots of holes in that logic, but this is what corporate and third-party recruiters believe, so you might as well go with the flow, folks, right? you know, rather than right. swim against right. the river. The idea, the idea being that, that somebody who isn't looking is a better candidate is something that those of us working with job seekers have always found really frustrating. But like you said, there's no point in, in uh, arguing or being, being uh, you know, challenged by that. The best approach is to jump right in and do what needs to be done to make sure that those people who, like you, who are looking for great candidates are able to find uh, the, the job seekers who are those good fits. And to do it easily. <laughs> so where does someone if start? Findable, right? if, you're, if you're not findable, then you, you might as well just consider that you'll be looking for a while, unfortunately. And that's, that's the shift that's taken place in the labor market in terms of how individuals are marketing themselves. Because folks, and maybe this goes right into the notion of uh, what my tip should be, things have changed. And as people keep writing to me time and time again based upon what they hear on the show, most people go into their job search with the old notions of how to market themselves. It is purely write a good resume, these days, you know, add a good LinkedIn profile, send the resume out to jobs, and that's wrong. It doesn't work as well as it did uh, 10, 15 years ago. And you have to adapt in order to be able to be marketable, whether it's for gigs or full-time jobs. So we're covering that in this show. It's a perfect lead-in for the rest of our conversation, and let's pick up where we left off. So 
we, we were talking about blogs uh, and uh, you know, having writing samples. And what platforms might someone put their website? I know, it, you know for me it's not difficult to create a WordPress site, but for some people it might be. What do you recommend to people? I am a big fan of WordPress as well, and people can create a very easy WordPress site that doesn't even cost anything, um, at, or they can pay a little something and, and maybe leverage a, a little bit more skill or, or tap into somebody who's expert at WordPress to create a, a more involved site. But I really like WordPress. I think it's very optimized for search. There's a lot of support online when you have questions. There, there are many forums for questions. So someone who is interested in, and uh, excited about creating a website, I definitely recommend WordPress. There are other sites that are uh, good places to put content and information and that will provide you a link that you can share. So for example, about.me is a well-known landing page site. It's very easy to use. It does not really require any technical skill. And it is a, is a great place for people who, who just don't, don't really want to do anything that's too difficult. Another is called flavors.me, another kind of landing page site that lets you put some, some key information, a couple links to, to things that you want people to know about, and gives you, again, an easy way to make yourself look a little more technically savvy than the person who's simply submitting a resume. When you say landing page, I know what you mean, but not everyone might. What do you mean when you say a landing page? So a landing page is really, when I think of a landing page, I think of a place online that's about you. So it would be a landing page about you, um, a place where you can give someone a, the URL, the link to that page, and they can land there and learn about you, and they can see the information that you've created that you want them to know. So, for example, LinkedIn, so for it, LinkedIn is one um, example of a landing page, but we all know LinkedIn is something that everybody must have, so it's not all that distinguishing to have a LinkedIn, although necessary, it's not special. So if you want to do a little bit above and beyond, then you'll have your own website, a social resume um, slash landing page. And folks, I'll use the About Me as an example because I know it better. One of the things that you're able to do is, number one, have a lovely graphical display behind you or image behind you and any text that you present there. And number two is, and this is my personal favorite for, uh, for people, is it's a way that you can aggregate some of the social links that you've developed uh, over the years. So there can be a connection with your LinkedIn page, with your Facebook page, Twitter feeds, on and on and on. So you can provide one specific landing page and have people be able to explore all the things that you've developed uh, or all the information that you're making publicly available. And the great uh, thing about creating your own page, creating your own site, is that you have so much control over what you want to feature. So for example, in LinkedIn, you have only a certain amount of control over what people will see. LinkedIn is a little more challenging for people who have maybe um, dual career goals, if they have what's known as a slash career. So for example, if you're a, an accountant slash marketing executive, or if you're if you're if you're having a, a little more of a non-traditional uh, career path that you want to showcase, something like LinkedIn puts you in a box and doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. Whereas when you create your own site uh, using either WordPress or, or any number of other tools uh, about not me or or um, or any of these that that we've mentioned, you have that, that flexibility to put front and center what people should know about you. You have an opportunity to provide a place where they can go either to the left or to the right, learn about you as an accountant or learn about you as a marketing executive. And that's really really helpful and useful uh, for people to be able to have that control over what people are learning about them. Cool. I want to go back to the WordPress site for, for a moment because if someone hasn't used WordPress, they don't know necessarily all the wonderful features and functions. Now, for someone to be discovered, you know, they obviously have to be SEO optimized. Uh, 
how easy is it using WordPress to SEO the site so that they're more easily discovered? I always hesitate to say it's very easy because I recognize for people that some that this seems like a, a foreign concept or something that's brand new. And when anything is new, it, it does seem a little challenging. However, WordPress is very user-friendly and, like I said, has great online forums. You can Google just about anything you want to know about WordPress and find a bunch of people who are writing and providing insights and information. There are um, back-end ways in WordPress to help people discover your information. So when you're writing a blog in WordPress, you see the, what I call the back end, which is where you enter your information. You type in your blog. You write your, your notes about what you want people to see. And WordPress makes it very easy to choose your, your keywords and to, to do what's called tagging. So it gives you a chance to, to um, tag certain topics and to select categories. All of these things, they, they sound complicated for someone who's never tried it out, but I certainly uh, recommend anybody who's at all inclined to want to do a little something for their job search to check out a tool such as WordPress and, and try it out, look at it, do a few Google searches and realize that it's probably not as hard as you think it is. And folks, it really is. A, the the add-ons I would mention here is for the purposes of how the site appears, WordPress offers lots and lots of different themes, which are basically pre-programmed uh, um, frameworks for the appearance of the site. And then in order to customize it further, there are things called plugins that add additional features to the site. So there are SEO plugins. There are plugins to prevent um, you know, all the spam that there are folks out there who love nothing more than to spam comments onto people's blogs. And as such, there are things that will block them out. So by all means, it's very easy to use. And there are a couple of tricks, like Miriam says, in order to be able to ensure that your site, your site looks like you want it to and provides great content like you want it to and will be SEO optimized so people can discover you. And I, so what else can people do? We've, I'm sorry. Well, you know, I wanted to say, you know, on top of that, that I recommend before you start a blog, you do think about learning some of those tricks that you mentioned, because I've worked with people who had been blogging for years, even for their business, and they have great content and, and useful and interesting information, and then they touch base with me because they want to grow more, and we, we look into what they've done, and we realize all that they have not optimized and the, the missed opportunities that they've been blogging maybe even for years for their business and yet have not considered how to make it search engine friendly and, and how to, to, to select the right keywords. So definitely don't just jump right in. Do a little research. Um, use Google or find a, a book um, and make sure that you're using your time well so that the product you create is really working for you. Agreed. What else can people be doing beyond simply the WordPress site and the landing page? I am a big fan of using different social networks to demonstrate expertise. So, um, for example, my favorite is Twitter. And I know some people are, are not big, huge fans of Twitter, but I love Twitter because it gives you the opportunity to be very public without any obstacles or roadblocks in between you and people you potentially would like to meet. And you can post comments that don't take a ton of time to write. You don't need to write a blog in order to post something on Twitter. And you can share something that demonstrates that you're in the know about your field and uh, that you can be a resource for people in your industry. 
for those reasons, I really love Twitter. I also think that this might be surprising for some people, but I think that Facebook can be a wonderful tool to help connect to potential opportunities, although I know a lot of people think of these uh, social media outlets as ways to lose a job because that's what we see in the news. But when Or certainly lots of time. Help, yes. <laughs> but when, when used well and in a mature and competent way, the, all of these tools, are great free opportunities for people who have some expertise to share to let people know what they're doing. So I, I always tell clients, if you are an expert in your industry and nobody knows about that except maybe the people who work with you in your office or maybe your, your, your very closest friends, then it's going to be hard for someone like you, for example, to find them. And these tools such as Twitter, uh, Facebook, Google Plus is another one. It's, it's changing a little bit, but Google Plus to be found. All of these tools make it that much easier to be found, and that's what job seekers need to be all about. Agreed. Out of curiosity, how is Google Plus changing? Oh, Google Plus. Um, Google is supporting uh, Google Plus in a different way. They're they're always uh, changing what what's required. In fact, they're going in and cleaning out old uh, Google Plus profiles that are unused. Um, they're the 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 word on the street is that it's shifting potentially to a place for images as opposed to a social network. Uh, truly, I don't think any of us really know how Google Plus is changing, but but it is changing because I think that they realized that they were not able to become, I guess we all kind of assumed they wanted to be the next Facebook. And they, they did not accomplish the numbers of people using Google Plus. However, at, by the same token, when you post things on Google Plus, when you have a Google Plus account and you post content there, so by content I mean an update, um, a comment, and a link, or um, you know, some information that you think people want to know, and a link to learn more. When you post that kind of information on Google+, it's very searchable. And so when somebody uh, searches for that content, Google+, Plus will uh, potentially be the result that people find. So I have some clients who don't have anybody following them on Google+. Plus. Maybe they have five or six people following them because they haven't, they haven't tried leveraging it at all, and yet they have thousands and thousands of views on their Google+, Plus page. And that's why I think that uh, Google Plus is something worth considering posting to and, and keeping, um, you know, keeping content there. Um, but we, we we are recognizing it's changing. Yeah, we ju I, ju I took us over to Google Plus there, but I want to come back to Facebook because we kind of went by that uh, fairly quickly. How should someone be using their Facebook relationships in order to market themselves? When you think about your Facebook friends, these are probably people who, who actually know you. Maybe they went to high school with you or um, you know, people who you've been in, in groups or organizations with and, and you're just, you're, you're maybe just connect with them only on Facebook. Maybe they're, they're quote friends, not quote real friends. But those people are the ones who can be the best networking contacts. And networking, as we know, has always been the best way to find a job. And we don't want to forget that Facebook is a terrific way to network. What I recommend people do is use Facebook not just to post vacation pictures or pictures of pets or children, but use it to occasionally share an update that demonstrates your professional expertise. So, for example, um, if you've gone to a professional conference or event, or you have a comment on something that's in the news that relates to the work that you do, post that and share it uh, on a regular basis. That way people will know what you do, they'll know what you're expert at, and then at some point when you want to reach out to that network to ask them for contacts or does anybody know anybody at this organization or might anyone be able to make an introduction uh, for this type of opportunity, then people will have a good sense that you know what you're doing and that you would be a great person to uh, introduce to their contacts. 
And that, I think, is something that is often overlooked, that people don't realize that their, their Facebook friends can also be their networking contacts. It's as though people partialize the relationships between personal and professional and leave professional at LinkBook and personal on Facebook and don't understand we're 360 degree people now. We have all of our lives out on the web together and there's no reason to separate them. That's absolutely true. I, I think that we always want, I'm always reminding clients and, and writing about the topic of that networking happens everywhere you are. That you, it can be on the, the soccer field when you're watching a, a, a kid's game. It can be in the grocery store, any any time online. And it's really just up to people to leverage these great tools in order to to make something happen from them because it's not always going to just automatically happen on its own. Agreed. How are groups on Facebook? Do people uh, find groups helpful in their job search or just in the networking? Uh, you know, I have to admit that I haven't uh, explored groups as much with the clients I work with, on the Facebook groups. However, um, Facebook makes it pretty easy to find people in groups with, with, their, um, with their search in their search toolbar. And if you can find an open group, then definitely that's, that's a terrific opportunity. I think that Google Plus Hangouts, as well as communities, which uh, co communities are kind of the equivalent of groups, um, but in Google+, Plus, are better uh, go-to places for somebody to, to find. Um, sometimes you can find a really active uh, community on Google+, Plus, and I recommend those a little bit more um, often than I would a Facebook group, but certainly there is Anywhere you can be interacting or engaging with people is a great place to, to take your networking. Last night I was spending a little bit of time trying to find a data architect for a client. Tried Facebook uh, as a change of pace. One of the things that someone's able to do is do a search for the term, and lo and behold, you discover people who are liking that term. Now. It's not necessarily going to help you get a job, but I'll simply say that anyone who had liked the term data architect was signaling to me that they were a data architect and thus someone who I should explore whether it was on Facebook or circle back to LinkedIn. So if, for example, you're a PHP developer, yes, there are groups on Facebook for PHP development or Ruby on Rails, and thus if you're in newer technology areas, these are clearly uh, Facebook is clearly a place where you, know, you can connect into groups and you know, talk to people all over the world and thus signal to recruiters that this is the work that you do and that you do it well. But don't neglect just a simple term uh, that describes your employment because, um, again, recruiters are trying to find people like you and don't quite know how to use Facebook search well enough uh, to, to locate you like they do on LinkedIn. But they're using it, which I, th I think the fact that you are using it is a great a reminder that people should uh, share that kind of information and make it public. That's the other thing that sometimes is a big surprise for people because when I, I speak to groups and I, I tell them to make certain things on their Facebook public, I always see the big eyes because we, we all know what you're, quote, supposed to do on Facebook is to lock it down. So recruiters like you would not have any access to anything about that person, right? I mean, it, 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 that's kind of our, our bias. But there are things such as your, your professional information, your contact information, your um, you know, anything that is, um, you know, about uh, something that would help someone know about your expertise, all of those things are things you want to make public on Facebook so it is searchable. And another thing, it, it's a little bit of a technical uh, thing to, des to describe in, um, in, in via just a, uh, with a podcast without being able to show it. But people should Google how to create public updates on Facebook because when you post an update on Facebook, typically it's going to your friends or it's going to uh, you know, the people who you're connected with on Facebook. But you also have an opportunity on Facebook to create what's known as 
public updates, and then you can choose to say something that's professional or something you want everybody to know and post that on Facebook as you might on Twitter or on LinkedIn, and, and people are able to People like you, for example, recruiters, sourcers, are able to find uh, that update, and that gives them another way to, to, uh, to identify people who are talking about the topics that they're recruiting on. Cool. Miriam, we're coming up on the end of our time with one another today, and I want to make sure that if there are any last points you want to share, I want to give you the floor to cover them. So. Are there any last pearls that you'd like to share with everyone? <laughs> pearls of wisdom. I think the best thing is to be open-minded and embrace social networking tools. Um, we didn't talk too much about identifying the tools that are best suited for your skills and expertise. So, for example, if you're a very visual person in a visual field, don't hesitate to turn to Instagram or Pinterest or um, use a video tool, YouTube or any, any kind of video tool to showcase your expertise. Whereas if you're a writer, a blog, where if you like to write short things, Twitter, think about where you can best showcase your expertise and where people who you're trying to attract will be looking. And don't discount the fact that there are recruiters who are looking in, in uh, Facebook and searching Twitter and, and looking in Google+. So I really hope that, that our talk has inspired people to try something new if they haven't tried it already and that, um, that you never know. If you've, if you've done the same thing over and over again and you aren't experiencing the results you want, try something different and you might be very surprised at the success. Cool. And I'm going to mention one tool that I'm sure most people don't know about. If you're in a field where being able to speak well and to communicate orally is part of the territory and you want to demonstrate that, there's an app for the iPhone. I don't know if it's available for uh, Android. It's spelled R-A-U-R. And basically, it's the ability to do a short podcast on your iPhone and have it distribute it out to your social networks. So, for example, these days I'm sharing job descriptions that way. You can share information about your firm, what you're doing, and a whole host of other things to complement some of the visual things that you might share on Facebook or Instagram or elsewhere. So, again, a little tool that most people don't know about I thought I would share there. That's great. And people should realize there are all kinds of tools like that. So just be open to new potential opportunities, and that is the best advice for job seekers. You betcha. Miriam, thank you. I appreciate you making time. How can people find out about you, your books, your work, all about you? I invite everyone to visit me on my website and blog. It's kepicareers.com. That's K E. P-P-I-E, careers, all one word, dot com. And I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn. So please um, uh, uh, navigate over to my LinkedIn profile and click on connect from my profile. Let me know that you heard me on the show, and I'd love to connect there. But Twitter, like I said, is my favorite, at Kepi underscore careers. If you use Twitter, uh, send me a, a note at Kepi underscore careers, and I'd love to hear from you. Super. And folks, we'll be back next time with someone else to help you with your job search. I'm Jeff Alpin, The Big Game Hunter. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Visit my website, which is TheBigGameHunter.us. There's a lot there that you can watch, listen to, or read to help you find work more easily. And if we're not connected on LinkedIn, send a connection request to me at LinkedIn.com forward slash IN forward slash The Big Game Hunter. I accept connection requests from people worldwide. Except if you look like a spammer or scammer, except if you're a third party recruiter. So I'm Jeff Altman. Hope you have a great day. Take care. For more job search advice, visit Jeff's website at TheBigGameHunter.us. That's TheBigGameHunter.us.